So I, uh, I worked in the music business for 10 years uh, as a tour manager. And two and a half years ago, I developed a solution for a problem that I had every single day doing that job. But now two and a half years on from the developing that solution, and people say, what's it for? I never, ever talk about music. Because what we realized is what we built applies to one of the biggest yet underreported global issues. So I would like just to think about how we got here today. I guess some people took the tube, some people walked, maybe got a cab. But at some point in that journey, I'm sure you used an address. And that's good, because everybody got here. We're in London, addresses work. But the reality is that in 75% of countries, address systems actually don't work. In those three quarters of the world, people live every day without an address. The Peruvian economist, Hernando de Soto, put it like this. He said, without an address, you live outside the law. You might as well not exist. And in those 75% of countries, there are 4 billion people who live without an address every day. That's a UN statistic and a bigger number than I'm guessing you would have thought. So let me give you an example. If you go on your mapping app to a township in South Africa or a favela in Rio, you'll see a couple of roads, but a mass of empty space. If you then flip that to satellite view, you'll see hundreds, thousands of homes, businesses, activity. But literally none of this is on the map. But even in countries where the streets do appear on the map, it's not a given that that street will have a name and that they'll have numbers for the houses. There are countries in the world spending tens of millions of pounds, not millions, and decades, not years, trying to build addresses where they didn't have them. If you see this example in Ghana, this is the result of several pilot projects over the years. All of them started, but none of them finished, each trying a new system. And at the end of the day, none of these end up as a reference for this person's house. So how does this person get anything delivered? How do they know where to tell the authority to connect the electricity, to tell the doctor where they live? It's impossible. So economists say in the next 15 years, there's going to be 3 billion people joining the middle class. And that would see the single biggest decline in global poverty yet. But there are three big hurdles people got to overcome. One, they've got to get connected. The smartphone penetration is massively on the rise. Secondly, they need to get banked. But microfinance institutions, mobile payments, they're all massively on the rise too. In fact, M-Pesa contributes 20% of Kenya's national economy now. But the third problem is that these people are unaddressed. And it's the biggest, least reported problem and it's not getting solved. So let me take a step back to my time as tour manager in the music business. If you think about the problems in the music business, you'll think about, do people get paid from streaming? But if you work in live music, no, addresses are the problem. Every single day, musicians do not get to gigs. And if this is your job, this is a problem. Where, wherever we worked, if it's uh, getting to Gate 57 at Wembley Stadium or that remote villa in Italy, we had to employ a person to be the person that you call when you think you've arrived and then you realize that you haven't. There was one occasion where a band called me and said, Chris, don't panic, but we may have just sound checked to the wrong people's wedding. <laughs> and this happens every day and worse. So. Uh, so I was going to be the tech-savviest tour manager in town. And I was going to fix this problem. And I presented to the world of music GPS coordinates. And I was going to find them for every, every place that we had to load in and give them to people. But what I hadn't banked on is that GPS coordinates are not your friend. Half the people just sent them back and went, what? <laughs> and the guys who did use them, uh, it's, it's incredibly difficult to put them in without making some kind of mistake, but then you don't know it. 
So people would then arrive even further away than they did when the address didn't work. So this is a problem. And it's not just a problem if you work in music. Even the guys who work in geography, they do not meet for a beer at 25 degrees, 9 minutes, 40.918 seconds south. <laughs> it doesn't happen. They use an address, they use directions, and they get lost. They call each other. So nobody has found a human-friendly way of doing this. So those two and a half years ago, I had my annual cup of tea with a friend of mine uh, who's a mathematician. And I said, look, we've got to find a way to label every couple of meters in the world with something so easy my musicians cannot get it wrong. So we cut the world up into three meter squares. We said, right, we've got 57 trillion three meter squares. We've got to name them with something. And we had a long pause. And, um, and then we came up with an idea. And what we came up with was the notion that if you took 40,000 words from the English dictionary and you put them in combinations of three words, that's 40,000 cubed, that's 64 trillion combinations of three words. And that was enough for us to have one three-word combination for every three meter square on the planet. So that's what we did. We made a global grid and we named all those squares. So right now, I'm standing in Scores Glove Planet. And you guys, you're in uh, Pets Relax Zoom. <laughs> and we did that in nine languages. So I've now made my life into pushing this system out there because it fixed my problem. But when I go to a party in London and I tell people what I do, I get two pretty polarized responses. The first of which is um, three words, the, the whole world. That's kind of cool. And the second is, um, so hang on, I now live at Banana Radiator Centipede. Sorry, <laughs> you've actually given up your day job to do this. <laughs> and that's okay, because uh, if that guy, he lives at 43 Worcester Crescent, uh, maybe he doesn't need to also live at Banana Radiator Centipede. Maybe that works okay for him, and that's okay for us too. But... I would then say to him, well, let's look, at, let's look at this through the eyes of somebody who doesn't have that experience. So a few months ago, I was in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, and I visited the biggest favela there called Rocinha, and I met Pedro. And Pedro is the local surfing champion, but he's also an entrepreneur. He's built the first mail delivery system in Rio's favelas, where there are no addresses and no maps. So they've literally worked out a set of instructions to get to every single home in the efforts of having a postal system that we all take for granted. So when I said to Pedro, in Portuguese, there are three Portuguese words that refer to every single house in your favela, like banana, radiator, centipede. <laughs> he thought that was amazing. And he thought it was so amazing, he was like, we are going to make a database of all of our homes for our customers with the three words. And that's what he did. And a few weeks ago, I called him to see how he was getting on. And he said to me, Chris, now that we use three word addresses, we now finally have the potential to scale our business. And that's what put it into perspective for me, from developing this solution for the music business. What we're doing with Pedro and the projects like Pedro that really, that, that's so much more impactful that it kind of puts my initial use case into perspective. So what I would say is, the next time you think of a, of a solution to a problem, maybe do what I did. Put your use case to one side and just think for a minute and think, could this actually have much bigger potential? Thanks very much. Thank you.